I'm Pioneer Field Agronomist Zach Forey. I'm out here in a cornfield. We've got another beautiful day. The high today is probably going to be about 85. If the low is 65 or 70, we're going to accumulate another 25 or so GDUs today. This field right now, based on a planting date of about May 7th, we're at near 1,200 GDUs. 1,200 GDUs is about the time when products that are in the 90 to 95 relative maturity group would be beginning to tassel and to silk. And so that's indeed what we have here. Uh, plants are just beginning to silk. There's a lot going on right now with this, these corn plants. They're using a lot of water right now. They're at peak maximum water use needs. We're looking at somewhere between a quarter and a third of an inch per day of water use. But before we go on to where we're at today and what's happening in the corn plant today, let's talk about where corn plants were and how they got how they got here. So first of all, we have population. We need to get enough plants out in that field. So we, we plant based on a recommendation for a specific hybrid and environment. So we need to get the number of plants out there. Really early on, about the V2 or V3 stage, we've got the beginning of ear initiation beginning to happen really, really early. That determines the nodes that those ears are going to be at. The actual number of kernels around on each ear is developed at about the V5 stage. So again, that's pretty early when that's beginning to be developed. The next thing that gets determined is the potential length of the ear, the number of ovules long. So the rows are already determined. How long is that ear going to be? That happens in the late vegetative stages. And now we're at the very early reproductive stages where we've got pollination time. Pollination time is critical, uh, very sensitive to the environment. Again, a very high water use time of the year. And uh, each one of these silks has got to be pollinated and that will determine the potential maximum number of kernels that will form on an individual ear. Stress on corn plants has the most negative effect right at this time of the year, right during pollination. And so this is when we don't want to have drought stress, nitrogen deficiencies or any other kind of stress that might be affecting that plant. We want these plants to be healthy and happy, have plenty of nutrition, plenty of water at this time to maximize that pollination. So right here I mentioned we're at about 1200 GDUs. We're a full 300 or more over the long-term normal. So development has been very rapid and we're ahead of schedule here. What that means is uh, in this particular year, we're likely to have earlier than uh, average black layer we're going to get to maturity earlier. That means that we're going to have more heat in that September time period to dry corn plants down. With this really warm condition, warm temperatures, rapid development, there have been some questions. I've had some questions about can corn develop too rapidly? Can that be negative for yield? Can it be too warm? Certainly it can be too warm. Uh, temperatures that are too warm can just cause just flat out heat stress and of course high temperatures are also associated with moisture stress if you don't get enough rainfall to keep up with the amount of evaporation and transpiration that's happening with that plant. We've also looked at warm night temperatures. You know there's kind of an old wives tale that uh, warm nights make corn really grow and the reality is that warm nights mean that the days are warm and warm days are really what makes corn grow. But warm nights can be important too, because if the nighttime temperatures are too warm, you can actually have some negative consequences of that. During the night, we don't have any photosynthesis, and so the things that happen at night uh, can actually reduce yield. Uh, increased rate of uh, respiration can reduce yields uh, during those higher nighttime temperatures. And really, it seems that the biggest effect of high nighttime temperatures is that it causes corn plants to develop more rapidly. And uh, when they develop more rapidly, they can have a shorter reproductive phase. And that shortened reproductive phase seems to be the key component in causing yield reductions when your nights are too warm. Now here in, in this part of the world, in, uh, in Minnesota, North Dakota, uh, it's rare for our nighttime temperatures to really fall in that too warm kind of a category. I think we need to be in the, the 70s or 80s at night. Normally our nighttime temperatures are in the 60s or the low 70s. Probably not enough to, to really cause significant yield reduction because of too warm of nighttime temperatures uh, in this part of the world. Uh, and so uh, these kinds of conditions and temperatures we've got should be very positive for corn development as long as we're, uh, those plants have adequate moisture and adequate nutrition. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. 
Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.